Anchor's away. Welcome to Big D Country. Uh, this is your lovable widower, Prince DJ, a tired lovable widower, Prince DJ. And I uh, would be remiss if I, you know, even though this is a day that people would want to forget. It was 20 years ago today that suicide attackers attacked it not only the World Trade Center, they attacked at the Pentagon and probably could have been doing worse if some heroes had had not stopped the uh, stupid suicide bombers and the plane went down in Shakespeare, Pennsylvania. But thousands and thousands of people have died, not only in the World Trade Center, which was known as Ground Zero, and now uh, we have the Freedom Tower over in New York right about now. Uh, remember the lights that they usually do every year uh, to commemorate 9-11? Uh, I always thought the, the lights were very cool at the time. But, you see, you got to understand, see, I wasn't watching 9-11 live. I was working at a hotel over closer to Princeton, New Jersey, uh, which is 45 minutes to where I used to work, uh, where I used to live, I should say. And uh, I had a girlfriend at the time, with my uh, high school girlfriend at the time. And so I was working, and then 9-11 hit as I was getting ready to go to work. And something was very peculiar about that day. I even remember, remember the train had actually stopped in midway as I was getting ready to go to work, and then... When I finally got to the first stop before I could get my bus to get to work, which is a paratransit bus, uh, before my mother was verbally abusive to me, I, uh, you know, I actually called her and she had to come pick me up from work because nothing was running, no trains, no buses, no planes. I mean, they closed off the airspace, and they almost was going to give us hotel rooms to stay for the night, and then we figure out how the heck will we get back to home, wherever the home was, for the workers, and see, I was 45 minutes away, I lived 45 minutes away when I worked at, and I will never forget, I never forget when I called my mother let her know that uh, I was on my way to work, and I never forget that she told me that they hit the Pentagon, and my first thought was, oh my god, they hit the Pentagon! I said it just like that. I was like so shocked. I don't even know why I still went to work, but I still did. And lo and behold, I had to get help getting back back home because uh, uh, back then they was like the first plane hit one of the towers and then the second plane hit the other tower. And then uh, the first tower had uh, had collapsed. And then the second cloud, I have cloud. If you have watched uh, World Trade Center, uh, which is a story about officers even getting trapped in the uh, the World Trade Center, which is a very touching story. Uh, you could even feel their pain as they were trying to rescue people. Uh, they, they, I mean, they were trying to get the, you know, equip the, the cops and then help them with the rescue efforts. And then uh, they got trapped under the, the rubble of the World Trade Center. And they went into the elevator shaft. And I think a couple of them did, did not make it. And it was very sad. It was a re really sad movie. I mean, they do have a beautiful music, but it was really sad. Um, and now, although I don't know anybody personally, but there are people that I've known who've lost people in the World Trade Center or, or different parts of the World Trade Center and that, but yet, a lot of the communities had got, came together. And I remember that hearing the stories about how people actually helped to go into the rubble at Ground Zero. I mean, then we were all angry. I still actually went to work, but I, the job didn't last long because nobody was traveling. People were say, scared to fly, uh, afraid of another suicide attacker. And so, as a matter of fact, 9-11 was my first day on the job. Literally. Literally, my first day on the job. I was a, uh, I was a porter, but I clamped, uh, I, I vacuumed the hallway. And that was the day that I had good legs. 
I wasn't tired. I wasn't. I wasn't mentally, you know, drained because of loss of a loved one. But I was angry, though. I was angry. And, uh, this is one of the days that you don't want to, that you don't want to, uh, that you don't want to, uh, remember. But then they always had these themes. It's like, we will, we will never forget. And then it's like, for the people that either lost their jobs or lost loved ones, this is the day that you want to forget. I mean, you actually want to, uh, you want to forget that. But I mean, instead, I think I went to get my ID and I went to get some, at least some food for, I don't know how long, may not be for a month, but $111 is sure not going to get by for a month anymore because of inflation. But still, I mean, then when, you know, when I came back, you know, a lot of people are probably doing a lot 9-11 tributes or 9-11 specials and, and different podcasts and talk about podcasts. But I remember where I was on 9-11. I remember where I was. I was on my way to the Doral Forest store and over by Princeton, uh, over by Princeton Junction, uh, factory and floors and had to get help because it was just, it was just so real. It was like Armageddon, but in a ghost town type of feel. I mean, it was really scary. It was really scary. You didn't know there was going to be another attack or you didn't know what was going on. I hate, I hate PTSD like this. I truly, I mean, you see, my PTSD started when my late wife. That's when it really started. Then it got when I had heat stroke uh, because of some idiot who pulled a fire alarm. It's like a day before the day of the party. So it's going to be like that to 9-11 too. I mean, and, and it was a beautiful day just like today. Well, it was hot here in Galveston, but... It was a beautiful day in in uh, the New York area. Beautiful day. Maybe God, that's why God didn't want me to go to work in the uh, the Marriott in the World Trade Center. I actually wanted to work at the Marriott at the World Trade Center. Yeah. And I got turned down and then turned around. Yeah. So... My condolences, and they, they had their uh, commemorations at different parts of the country, different parts of the world. My condolences to all the families, members that got their name read, who still have to remember their loved one and the tragic events of that terrible day. My prayers are with you. And uh, I know that there's always going to be difficult feelings at this particular time, especially those with the, the first responders community. There was a lot of first responders that actually lost their life in a different attacks, but they gave up their lives freely. And uh, I want to say thank you to the first responders that was in New York City, uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania, and also in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. I thank you for your dedication. I thank you for your service. My prayers always go out to you. Always, always got to go out to you. There's a lot of people that had wanted to join the military because of what happened 20 years ago today. 20 years ago today. You can still see what happened to 9-11 on YouTube. Uh, you can still hear 9-11 phone call from people who either have made it out live or haven't made it out live at the World Trade Center. And also on, on, on airplanes, you can still hear uh, the uh, control towers on that day as well. So a lot of remembrance is happening right now or have been happening throughout this day. So, Vicky Country would like to thank everybody for, I mean, we, I, I don't know why we survived 9-11 and others didn't, but we did. We did. 
and it's a surreal experience. It's a surreal experience that I hope that we never have to go to ever, ever again. And, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go into a special moment of silence for those that lost their lives 20 years ago today to 9-11. So join me in a special moment of silence, please.